Howdy, folks! Welcome to another Clutchcast. I am Matthew Schroyer, and uh, behind me is my good buddy BMW Z3. Um, today, we are going to talk about safety. An unfortunate and common, somewhat common, issue with uh, BMW Z3 Roadsters uh, happens to be the, uh, the weakness of the airbag system. Now, as you know, airbags are especially important for vehicle safety uh, should you get into a wreck, and that's just probably uh, even more so when you're in a small car like the Roadster. You want to have your airbag system in tip-top shape. Uh, something that, that tends to happen with uh, older BMW Z3s is maybe the soft top doesn't uh, repel water as good as it used to. Sometimes people just forget to leave the, uh, the top up when it rains and water collects in the bottom into the carpet and uh, that's bad because under that carpet are side impact sensors. These are sensors that are meant to detect when a vehicle hits the Z3 from the side. So basically they're accelerometers, um, but they're also really sensitive to moisture. And what we tend to find on a lot of uh, Z3s uh, is that uh, over time that moisture builds up and it causes that impact sensor to corrode and fail. On its own, that wouldn't be such a terrible issue. You just replace the sensor, done, and you drive off into the sunset. It's a little bit more complicated than that though because frequently when a side impact sensor goes and they tend to go dramatically, uh, that sends a bad signal to the airbag computer. Sometimes when the airbag computer receives a bad signal or a bad message from any of its sensors, uh, that can lock up and brick the entire airbag computer. You know, what could begin as just a simple replacement of an impact sensor, while costly, is not, you know, enormously expensive in the big scheme of things. Uh, it can get a lot more costly and a lot more difficult when the problem becomes the airbag sensor and the airbag computer. Now, this car has an airbag light that has been on since I ever owned the car. Bit by bit, I've been trying to chip down the issues with the airbag system. The driver's side impact sensor has already been replaced in this car, and so too has the airbag computer. Uh, the airbag computer that's in this car now came from a crashed Z3 of this, pretty much the same exact model, same year. The airbag computer was uh, reflashed thanks to software, open source software called INPA, I-N-P-A, and uh, everything looks good so far, but there's still one impact sensor that needs to be replaced, and that's unfortunately on the passenger side. Now, you know, whenever your airbag system, you know, is not functioning correctly, there's always the question of whether it will function at all. And I don't think anyone really has a definitive answer as to what would happen in a car uh, if this sensor is out or that sensor is out. So, I mean, really this kind of needs to be on the top of your list if you have, you know, a similar car with similar issues. So what's needed for this job? Well, most importantly, you're going to need to replace that sensor. This is a replacement sensor uh, sent to me by Prussian Motors. If I can open up the bag. Here it is, a side impact sensor for a BMW Z3 Roadster. There's a website that uh, a lot of BMW owners use to help track down part numbers, and this website is called Real OEM. It basically catalogs all the parts, and it's been it's made it very easy to replace things on this car. Uh, sometimes, though, there's a little misinformation 
on that site about you know what is a good replacement part. For example, for this application here, uh, real OEM indicates that there is a part that supersedes this side impact sensor. And that's actually just not the case. If you plug in any other sensor than this one right here, uh, you're going to have a bad time. It might actually end up breaking the uh, airbag computer, but more than likely it's just not going to plug in because the connectors are very specific. And this is what the connector profile looks like for this particular airbag sensor. You know, when you look at the airbag sensor that's already installed in the car, if it's failing, it's pretty obvious externally. You can tell us because it shares a lot of similarities with like a uh, uh, a leaking battery. You know, you get a lot of residue, a, a lot of weird buildup around it. This one has a little bit of residue, but there's nothing that really shouts out to me that this is a, a bad part. So we're going to give it a try. Worst case scenario, you know, I'll have to uh, replace it again. Actually, worst case scenario, I'll have to replace the computer, but you know, I'm willing to sort of take that chance with this. But this looks like a good unit and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and give it a try. The other thing you're going to need are uh, screws. So the airbag sensor is installed with uh, two screws. Uh, it accepts a T25 uh, Torx bit, which I have one right here. Real OEM actually doesn't list a part number for this particular Torx screw. Uh, but that's not actually that big of a problem. I took the old screws out of this BMW, measured them up, and found what I think is a pretty good equivalent on Fastenal. So this is a part that I obtained from Fastenal. It's a T25 Torx screw, uh, sheet metal screw, uh, measuring, what's that, 10 by 3 and a quarter, something like that. But this is a little larger than the ones that came in the BMW, but they seem to work just fine. <laughs> The last one is a little bit difficult to track down, but these are actually the uh, these are actually the clips that fit into the body, and the idea is you put the screw through them, and uh, these ears expand, and basically allows you to secure the sensor to the frame of the car. That's basically all you need in terms of replacement parts. However. Uh, if you're like me, you might want to replace the nuts and the bolts that hold that seat to the car. So that's most of the replacement parts that you'll need for the job. So let's just dig into it. So I've removed the seat. It's, uh, it's a little dirty down here. Um, it uh, did not go 100% smoothly. Uh, you can see that uh, most of the connectors are, are just fine. This wiring loom is a, is a bit of a mess. Um, the biggest problem was uh, this piece right here. This goes into the passenger occupancy sensor. The purpose of that sensor is to detect when a person is sitting in the passenger seat and if the sensor detects no one in that passenger seat, then it turns off the airbag. So if you were to get into an accident, um, it would only deploy the airbags that it needed to to protect people, and that kind of reduces the cost of an accident. But uh, this plastic is, is pretty brittle going into that sensor, and uh, it's snapped uh, right off. So, so I'm going to go to a uh, pick and pull, uh, LKQ pick and pull and uh, try to get one of these uh, from a, another car. Fortunately, this connector and the same occupancy sensor is used in the E46 3 Series and also the 5 Series of the same year. And um, LKQ has some of those sitting on the lot. So I'm going to take a look at what they got and hopefully pull one from the pick and pull. Mm -hmm. 